That was The Bite, one of my favorite urban legends. And I'm now joined by the director of The Bite, Justin Harding. Good to see you, Justin. Good to see you, Eli. All right, Justin, tell us the story of The Bite. I really like what we did with the story because to me, the, um, you know, the bite really, it's, it really represents like the vulnerability of the human body, right? Yes. And this urban legend really taps into the fear of invasion and some foreign object invading your body. It's a great metaphor for like pregnancy. And it is, it's, it's literally a fear of pregnancy, yeah. so, but it's not your choice. It's some, someone else using you. You know, yeah. to grow their eggs. Exactly, and I'll never experience the fear of pregnancy, but it does tap into a personal fear of mine, which is dealing with something that's in your body, uh, like a disease or something that doctors can't diagnose, that they can't understand. Going to your loved ones and, and to caregivers and telling them something's wrong with me, there's something inside of me, and having those people who are supposed to be your loved ones minimize what you're saying and sort of brush it off. Meanwhile, you know your body, you know what's coming. That to me is where we took the story and built on top of the legend into a, into a character-driven story in this relationship. Yeah, you're totally healthy and then some germ invades your body and takes it over and it's, you realize how vulnerable you are. The human body is incredibly vulnerable and we, we walk around in these skin suits, you know, all day. We're at risk constantly, and it's a nice universal fear to play with in a horror film because you get to take that anxiety for a walk. Doom scrolling the internet. Great idea. Also, there's the fear of foreign. Yeah. You know, this idea that we want to go to these places that are outside our comfort zone, which really, in my early films, the you're from the safety of the suburbs, you want to go far off the beaten path, but that actually gets you into danger you're not ready to handle. And I like the the idea of, like, they're, at, they're trying to be at the main resort, but it's just there's too many obnoxious people around, and it's like, no, 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 you want to go, go to this place that's off the beaten path, but, of course, that's where the... You know, everybody wants to go somewhere special are. and somewhere unique. And meanwhile, you know, you can end up invading some other environment that you're not supposed to be in. So it touches on yes. the theme of invasion again. I think all of us too, you know, you globally coming out of a pandemic, you know, you've, everyone can relate to the fear of your body just uh, being invaded with some virus or something. And it's interesting because the two episodes you directed, both the Red Room and the Bite, are body horror, mm -hmm. very kind of similar in tone to hostile and cabin fever in my early films and it's something that fascinated me that that was one of the reasons why i was I, I wanted to do these as urban legends everybody has that body horror fear i mean some of my favorite films are body horror films mm. i think like aliens is probably one of my favorite mm. you know at an extreme level or like even more recently like the black swan i feel is like an interesting creative you know body horror and well even that deleted scene in the first alien where you know Dallas is alive and they're being used to gestate the eggs. That was like, yeah. I remember reading the novelization of Alien and being like, what? Yeah. Just the idea of being used for some other creature's eggs is a terrifying thought. It is terrifying. Look. She's here. Rose, Rose, no. Rose! Rose, let me go! Let me go now! It's a nice to a chase here for you if you don't struggle. Let's talk about shooting. You know, every episode is going to have its kind of centerpiece horror scene and kill scene. Talk yeah. about shooting that scene. It's the build-up, the pause, and then, of course, the ultimate reveal of the spiders coming out of the face. What was your approach? How much was practical? How much was CGI? And how did you pull it off? So it's a combination. The, the prosthetic effects on her are, are practical. So, so she's, wearing, she's wearing the bite, the welt. There's a, there's a physical hair inside of it. When she's pulling on, on it, it's, it's pulling on that prosthetic. So that's all practical. And then it's all performance. Let me in! My wife right now is pregnant. She's like five months pregnant. There's definitely an invasion in our in our home. There's something growing. Yeah, well, there's something you know very very primal. It's the only reason we're here. Mm -hmm. We only got here because we were an egg at some point. So I think that everybody knows that they at one point were the invading species, and then it's fine when we're the invaders, but we don't want to get invaded. What advice would you give out there to aspiring directors that want to be in the director's seat where you are now? 
My advice would be to um, fix it in prep. Don't try to fix things in post. Like really prepare your shot list and storyboard so that you can focus on the storytelling. Because to me, it's all about the actor's performance. And the more you prep and the more you get the filmmaking cameras and editing off your plate, the more time you have with the actors. I just want to say, I think I'm such a fan of yours, Justin. Like, I really think you're a superbly talented director and are going to go on to do amazing things. This is surreal. Oh, wow. This isn't real life.